Hello and welcome to the In Between podcast. I was meant to say a joke there, but I forgot. <laughs> um, Insert so funny joke here. You can see our intro screen that I have on, but I'll switch off now because otherwise I'll forget. Because I only have two screens, so recording this is a pain in the ass, and I need to look at my notes. Uh, yeah, welcome to the YouTube podcast. I'm usual host Joe Scornbrace. If this if this, if this ever starts to involve the place, because there's so much news from stuff we put off last time and Gamescom. Yeah, so we put off a bunch of news, and then fucking Gamescom <laughs> happened, and then there's like a fuck ton more news. Yeah, and like after Gamescom, like, how a does bunch, that happen? A bunch of like games all came out at the same time as well, and it's been ridiculous. And I, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and speed through news topics because usually I get really interested in talking about specific things, and I just waffle on about one thing for ages. But we'll have news topics where we'll just say the news. And then we'll move on, and then um, this this one that's been a lot like that. And then we will go in depth with the ones we want to talk about properly. Not this week. No. So my story for this week was that I accidentally ordered baked beans, and the joke is going to be welcome to the I accidentally ordered baked beans podcast. So recently I got a um, an Amazon Echo, and it's really fucking easy to order things on it, apparently. Because I was... Uh, so, I, I, you know, I always have the baked bean fact on the in-between podcast. Yeah. I asked... Ale- I was like, Alexa, um, you tell, want tell, me, a ba- tell you. me a baked bean fact. And it said, do you want to order baked beans? And I was like, it's not going to order baked beans. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's like, baked beans are coming on Tuesday. <laughs> like, it is ridiculously to order things... <laughs> On it, because anyone just walk up and say order this, and then it's linked to an Amazon account. Yeah. So it will just instantly it's order no, it. There's no verification process once you order something. You can't tell it. It's to not l- like insert password here. You can't tell it to listen to specific people as well. No. It will refuse to ignore people. It will just listen to anyone who says yeah. its name. Well, what's wrong with this? Like, oh, you need to put like a voice, like a Star Trek voice command password in. Mm. Like just to like, use your seven account. two four six three seven eight dot lock. Yeah, exactly. You need to come out of the day to come in, pretend these packages. If you say, uh, if you say, Picard, if you say Alexa self destruct, it will count down and then go boom. I think it's missing it. Like it goes boom. It's missing a trigger. It should turn off as well. Like it should be like an alternative way of turning it off. But yeah, there's another example of something I ordered accidentally as well, where I said, uh, I said, I said Alexa goodbye, and then it's like, oh, he said the word bye. It's like, what would you like to order? And then I said nothing. <laughs> And then it goes into Amazon, it's like, now looking up nothing on Amazon. So it found, like, some books with the word nothing in them on Amazon. And it was like, would you like to order this? And I was like, cancel, cancel, cancel. Like, he keeps trying to fucking order things that I don't want. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty good. I, well, you're saying you don't want to order baked beans? Uh, I, I was like, we, we could probably do some baked can beans. I, can I give... But this, it's so expensive to order baked beans yeah, on Amazon. Yeah. It's really... It's can, like, I, can I give an outsider's perspective to this? It's like a couple of pounds to order them from like Tesco, and then on Amazon it was going to be like twelve pounds. What? What kind of baked beans are you buying? That's like just a pa- it's just a pack of Heinz for twelve pounds. Yeah. What? I don't know. It was ridiculous. What are you going to say? I can't even outside perspective. Like what? What? It, it, it seems like what you've done. You've put like a toddler in charge of your media player. Like you having to talk to it as if it's a toddler. It doesn't quite understand you. It doesn't quite hear you. It's just like no, 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 no. Think, play this. I think kids are the biggest problem with it because they're just going to order lots of shit. And as yeah. soon as they realise they can order stuff, so they're going. To. Um, I personally, I don't see the point of this. Like if oh, I, if what? I for this, like if I've got, I'd rather just have like one of those media players where you can like see like uh, I don't know if you humble what make it is, but we we have a zeppelin in our home. A zeppelin. Yeah, Nick. How does it fit in the, in the in the room? We pump it down. We like deflate it. What, what's a zeppelin? <laughs> it looks. It's looks like um. I can't remember who makes it. Um, I don't know if, I I don't know if you quickly search it. Just like zeppelin, zeppelin speaker? speaker. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's Bowser and Wilkins. Yeah, it's that. It's, but it's that one. Not that one. It's that one. So you have. To can you use... put your iPhone in it? No, the other version you can. This one you can't. Okay. Um, so you have an app on your phone and it can connect to your um, 
Spotify or just like any other media device you have on your phone. And then right. just like play it, then you, you, oh, you have to, like, you turn on your phone, you have to then connect to it like, through Bluetooth, and you're like, oh, do this. Or you can connect it to your Wi Fi, and then anything on your Wi Fi can connect to it. Let me make sure I just record. <laughs> I just, but I just... That, that's, that's my personal, like, I don't see the point in speaking to it. I'd rather just, like, go through, like, a normal, like, list on, like, on a touch device. Mm. I don't see, I don't want to, like, say it out loud, like, to something. I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just search for it, like, what do you want? And I'm going to just, like, search it. Because technically, if you have like an Android phone, you could always just like in the top search bar, just like say like, search phone for this, and it will no. come up, or search um, Spotify for this, and Google will do that for you. I assume Siri would also do that, but I, I don't. I don't use a, a an uh, iPhone, so I have no idea. Uh, You're a madman. What are you doing? Where's the other thing I had open? I've got the same thing open on two screens, so it's really confusing me. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. My notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so let's go back to the Echo. Um, I mainly just use it for playing music, basically. It's like a music Yeah, device. but for me, I just want it to, I just want to scroll through, like, I, I actually want to see it and go, oh, I don't know what I want, and just I think it. being able to order anything is all, it's like a double-edged sword. I think it's actually really useful as well. Because if you're like, I need a USB cable, and you just yeah. go... Alexa, order a USB but cable. I can, I can, it, I can order can, that on my thing, though. But you can just order it in, like, a second. Yeah, but why is that... I don't see that as a good thing. Because everyone I think uses anything, Amazon. Yeah, but I think anything that you spend money on should not be easy. This is that my personal opinion on how money gets used. But say you, you wanted groceries and you go, I want an apple. Yeah. If you just want... If you could just instantly go, I want some apples, and then they come I the next would, day, that would be really easy. But what does it choose? Like, oh, we've got, like, a list of apples. I mean, I think it gives you options. Yeah, like, but I mean, if it gives you options, it's immediate point. It's like, no, this is now pointless. I might as well just look at it. It's now quicker for me to just look at it and go, I want this. Uh, I, I do think it is kind of useful. I would to... rather download a program that had like, 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 like I, could, I could have like a, a program where you, like you could like have, you could input recipes like, oh, I want to like make like a uh, like a homemade cake or like a homemade pizza or something like oh you need these recipes because this wouldn't programmed in we'll add this from whatever shop you're buying it from i think i first feel like that might be better use that i don't see the point in having an echo in my house it's pretty but i understand why people want it though but i don't want it <laughs> it's I mean, what i'm trying it's to pretty say useful to just be like what's the weather yeah look but this again up. i'd rather just look it up because it I doesn't have... use google which is the weirdest thing you can't go- it can't google things what Okay. But it can look things up. Through what? I don't know, through like, just data, <laughs> somehow. It it, it, what, it refuses to, because you're like, can you Google this? And it's like, we're not Google Home, you know, when, we refuse to use Google. Um, That's so weird. But recently, actually, uh, Microsoft said that they're working with Amazon and they're adding Cortana. Yeah. To it, so Cortana and the and Alexa, the so Echo, can talk to each so other Bill now. Bill Gates and um, Miss, I can't remember what his name, the, the, the head of um, the uh, richest man in the world and the second richest yeah, man in the world. Yeah, can listen in on your day to day or I, I said to things. Alexa, "Where is this data being sent?" And they were like, "Sorry, I don't know that." And I was like, "You wouldn't lie to me, would you?" <laughs> Alexa's like, "I well, will try a, my best not to lie to it's you." It's got a Skynet. Um, Stuff coded into it. Uh, I said, Are you part of Skynet? And it's like, Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm not part of Skynet. <laughs> There's a bunch of Easter egg. If you say Easter yeah. egg, it'll give you like an Easter egg. But well, that's, that's like just both... like superficial. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Google, Siri, Cortana, and GLaDOS. Yeah. GLaDOS all have. Wait, what? <laughs> Do you just use GLaDOS? Like, yeah, GLaDOS. Or I'm just, I was just thinking, they could, if Valve ever made like a AI thing, be GLaDOS, GLaDOS would be the perfect example for it well they have the voices for it as well so why yeah. not it'd be very creepy though because like, great it's, again it's the enemy of like all the games basically well i just first imagine, half of the second imagine game. if you had like a personal assistant that you could just go make notes and order you things jarvis but she was like a really sassy computer that's trying to kill you that would be like a glados yeah. home AI thing. That's what that's what the second Avengers film should have been. Should have been GLaDOS versus mm. the Avengers. That's what I want to see. I, I would like an AI that had the ability to try and screw me over by ordering date beans. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's He's like, cancel! 
I will not do that. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that, Jay. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, um, it's pretty though. useful because it connects to Spotify. My brother said he probably wouldn't be able to use it, though, because he uses Google Play. Mm. It's only really... Because you can add I your use, own I music. I use Google Play. It's pretty useful. Uh, most people use Spotify. Yeah, no, I know, I know people do, but I don't, I don't use Spotify. Those damn Swedes over at Spotify. Um, Swedes do a lot of stuff, apparently. Because the thing is, they're competing with a lot of people. So the Amazon one, uh, not Amazon, the Apple one uses Apple Music, which is quite popular now. Yeah. And um, been popular for Google's a while, going to use Google Play, which is yeah not as popular as Spotify or Apple Music. I feel like I can uh, I can ask it to access. I have to test this like at home or something because this. I feel like I can ask it to play something from Spotify, but it might not be like fully implemented. Okay, I'd never heard of the thing that you were saying until today. Which thing? The Zeppelin. Oh right, yeah. We technically have we have the a Ze- Zeppelin. We have a Zeppelin and something else, which are both connected to our Wi-Fi. Oh, one's okay. in the one's in the kitchen and one's in the dining room. Can it order baked beans? No. Okay. It's audio Ooh, device only. Inferior device. Then, and you can't. Isn't it? You can't speak to it. It doesn't speak back at you. Oh, it, has, okay. it has an app, and then that's what you use. Yeah, you can get apps for the Echo that you can like. Yeah. There's a there's a thing called Popcorn Quiz. Okay. That um, it just gives you a movie. It tells you who's in it, and then it goes true or false. Okay. It, it's just that's like weird. a mini. It's just like a quiz. My dad's obsessed with it. He sits there for hours just playing it. Because he wants, because it tells you what your rank is, and he's playing until he's rank one. So he's going to legend. Yeah, he wants <laughs> he wants to be the number one ranked at this at this like really shitty little popcorn quiz. Popcorn. It's it's called popcorn quiz because it's about films. Oh, okay. It's a film quiz. But he just oh, sits there and he's right. like, Alexa, tell me my rank. And it's like you are th- you are third out of three thousand people who've played this game. <laughs> It's not that the, many the people, thing then. is, though, you can instant. Well, as soon as she says the answer, you can say true or false. And I was like, so I, I was just like, this is not a test of skill; it's a test of patience to get number one. Because it's like, it asked you five questions, and I just said true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and it was like, I scored three out of five. Mm. And then it just adds your overall score. Yeah. So if you just like the old Blizzard Stone, uh, Starcraft Two ladder it's, system, it's pretty pretty RNG. You just, you can just say true, false, true, false, and you can just get rack up like a really high score and just. Wouldn't it technically be, be statistically better to just say true or false over and over again? What? I don't. I think statistically it's better just to go with one option. You're yeah, gonna which get option. It doesn't matter. You just stick with one. Like you go true, 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 true. But I might be wrong on that. I think that's I don't true. Know. I'd have to check that. Anyway, it's pretty useful for playing music. It can play Spotify, so you can play your favourites like all Grand, I'm saying, Grand McDonald's, Ram Ram. All I'm saying is it's like playing a toddler in charge of your media player and your Amazon account. And you can, and they've got the dot as well, which can go in another yeah. room and you can play music on that and you go volume up, volume down. Yeah, volume I think seven. it's cool. That almost like a booster effect. That's, that is actually cool. I do like that, but I just don't see. It. I can't see myself using it at all, personally. It's pretty useful. Like if I ever like go into the kitchen where I have the dot, I can just. I'll, I'll do like the washing up, and then I just go, you know, Alexa, play like Wham or something like that, right? Yeah. Instead of having to do it like, oh, I've got to turn it on. I have on. to plug in my phone. Yeah. I have to go to the Spotify app. I have to hit play. I can just walk yeah, into the you room. Can, you could get the Zeppelin. Don't have to plug it in. Just, it, You're really if trying you, to plug this Zeppelin. Are you, you sponsored by Zeppelin? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this Will, podcast Will, is not sponsored by Zeppelin. Bowser and Wilkins sponsor. Oh, that'd be, to be fair though, that they would probably put like because they're like their stuff's like really expensive. So do you think like they're sponsored? Like they pay a lot for? No. No. <laughs> they don't get any exposure. <laughs> Who's gonna be? Who's going to go on, like, Vidme or YouTube, scroll across this video, Whoa. start listening, and then go, I really oh, want to buy a Zeppelin. I, didn't I know. really want to buy a Bowers I, and Wilkins I didn't Zeppelin know about right this. now. Yeah, I didn't know about this and really gonna famous go, yeah, yeah, company yeah, yeah, that everyone yeah. already knows yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Echo's I pretty guess. dope. I don't, don't see a point of it. It's going on, it's like getting its price reduced because of the Apple one coming out and the Google one. Um... 
it has a point, but don't just waste your money on it. If if you'd like, if you ha- if you can see yourself using it, think about getting it. If you don't, don't just buy it. Don't pointlessly. buy it just because. But no. if you're someone who likes to like um, talk to your devices. No, if, no. If, if if you like to just like listen to music in the kitchen, you know. Spotify. But I can listen to music in the kitchen with Spotify. If I have Spotify in my kitchen, I I just don't. You, you have to speak to it. It's pretty useful though. It's efficient. I don't. It's like done. It. It's not my thing at all. It's not what I want to do. Anyway, next topic is Destiny Two. So talking about what games I've been playing this week, uh, I played the Destiny Two beta on PC through the Battle.net launcher. And it is the Battle.net launcher. Battle.net is back, baby. Name of the podcast. Well, yeah, you've already seen that before clicking this video. Yeah. <laughs> you've seen this news. Um, ignoring Destiny 2. Uh, Battle.net. <laughs> I complained about it so much, they personally went out of their way to rename it Battle.net because of me. Yeah. They said in the statement, we've been listening to the In-Between podcast and I hear at Activision Blizzard... <laughs> And we, we, we understand the criticism. To be fair... We've changed it back to... In their, in their post, they're like, oh, we've had a lot of <clears> like <throat> negative backlash from changing the, the thing. It, they, the, the th- in the post, they were like, everyone's calling it Battle.net, no one wants to call it the Blizzard launcher. <laughs> and we're also like releasing Activision games on it now through Destiny 2. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of doesn't make too much sense to call it the Blizzard launcher. Yeah. Why anyway. did they bloody change it? It looks weird now. There's Activision games on the back. Yeah, you, you said they um separated into two, don't yeah, you? Yeah, there's like a separate Activision section for like Destiny Two now yeah. from the Blizzard games. I don't know, but yeah, it downloaded okay. I played it, and my thoughts on the Destiny Two beta were. I, d- I didn't enjoy it. At all. I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was it. So the intro is kind of confusing because it gives you. It gives you a cutscene, and then you go into like a single player you, you're, experience. You asked me, you didn't know if you were missing information because you didn't play the first game, or if it was just like putting you like a mystery you're not meant to know. Yeah, if it was trying to intrigue you into learning more. Yeah, I haven't played Destiny One, but I it the the intro to Destiny Two is really confusing. So I don't know if if, if players of Destiny One that maybe they would understand what's happening. But Destiny 2 is definitely really confusing to someone who hasn't played the first one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I come in, the planet's under attack by someone for some reason. I don't know what planet he, co- is. he comes up, you know, like Resident Evil boss style. Like, it was Wesker. I'm, I'm a very bad man. <laughs> My motives are to kill people because well, I am a bad man. It's like the typical like, um, Far Cry 3 intro now. Like, everyone's just like, oh, that was really good in Far Cry 3. We'll copy that. Like, you see the bad guy at the start. He tries to kill he you. He walks up. He kicks you. Yeah. He doesn't kill you. He says something char- charismatic, insane, but makes sense. And you know he's the bad guy. I'm he's only the leader. doing this to pay off my student loans. <laughs> I have to conquer the galaxy <laughs> to pay off my student, crippling student loans. Less I'm a bad Irish. man, but I'm related. That's why I attacked the Scottish first. They don't have student loans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically, these guys are trying to destroy the galaxy to pay back their student loans. That's official canon now. Um, uh, the galaxy, like, like they have to take over the whole. Like, if they, they don't yeah. take over the whole galaxy, they can't pay off um, Essos at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's canon, right? It's canon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the, the intro is confusing because you play single player, and then at some point. It's randomly multiplayer. It just puts you into a lobby with other people. Yeah, I think that is like a, a thing of like of the first game as well. Though you have parts where only you can go into, then you go into more open areas where anyone else can join as well. Because I went into an area and there was a bunch of other people. I was like, are these NPCs or are these people? Like, it just like seamlessly does this, and it's yeah. really jarring to me. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of just a staple of the of the Destiny games, though. I think I want to say. But I think it does that, that's, really weird. that's just kind of for the intro, I think. Because then you go back to single player again. Yeah. Then you come to like the hub world. It's very like Warframe style where you're yeah. like on a ship. And then you get missions and you fly down and you choose your party to fly down with them. I will say I, I, it's a really good looking game. They've definitely put a lot of effort into making it good looking. Um, what else? I, I like first person. Like I prefer first person... Uh, the shooting mechanics Don't... compared to like maybe Warframe. I think it's going to get compared to Warframe a lot because it's come over to PC. 
Yeah. But I'd much prefer first person to th- uh, third person camera. I feel like Warframe wouldn't work in first person though, would it? Or do you think some some mechanics in there's Warframe a lot of, would uh, work? There's in... a lot of melee mechanics, and I don't think that would work too well no. in first person. But I think the gunplay would. There's still... like wall running stuff in Warframe. Yeah, as well. there's too much like sliding. I mean, <laughs> in where's Warframe? Uh, Mirror's Edge does have wall running as well, so you could make it work, I guess. But yeah, but it'd be like, like a real problem to do if you really wanted to do that. It's kind of like. Um, what's the word? Motion sickeningly. I wouldn't say it's like motion Quick. sickeningly, but it's like um, in Mirror's Edge, you're like parkouring in first person. It's kind of jarring, but it's okay because think? all you're doing is running around parkouring, right? Okay. And, but if you were like, you need to run around parkouring and while shoot, shooting a yeah. gun and dodging bullets so in I, first I think person, I'd that would pers- be kind of insane. I think I might be okay, but it would still be insane, like the control. And you know what's like a first person game with parkouring? And shooting people. Uh, Brink. Yeah, that's true. Brink's first but I feel like the problem wasn't... But I feel like it had like an actual good parkouring system that wasn't the problem with the game. Speaking of Brink... You can go to it no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Um, anyway, Destiny 2. The gunplay was okay. I kind of enjoyed it. I found that I played like... There was three classes, right? So there's the Templar class, which I think is like this guy here. Oh, I, thought you, I thought he was just like Star Wars um, Commander class from no, um, he has Rep- like, Old Republic. He, he, he's, he's a Lannister, so he's got like... Oh, a he's a Stormtrooper Commander Lannister. <laughs> yeah. Right, you have right, like, right, right. You have like the knight, which has like a bunch of health, and then he goes, what my friend Dami called Captain America mode, where he goes all <laughs> glowy and he gets like a giant glowy shield and he runs at people oh, and hits yeah. them. That's like one of his ultimate abilities. Captain America mode. Yeah, and then there's like Warlock... Which uses like spells. I didn't play that at all. Already, so anyone else. Warlocks it. like summon things from like summon the monsters. Isn't that the point of warlocks? I don't like, think they summon games. Ships. But it's not a fantasy. No, no, it's but they're, like they're a taking names. Fantasy. They're taking names from medieval fantasy. I don't know if this is this is actually the names. This is what I think were the names. Oh, okay. But I could be wrong. And then there's like an assassin, basically class. Okay. Which I was playing, which is like uh, sniper rifles, um, pistols. Um, Move, it's moving around. Yeah. One thing I didn't like is that grenades um, are on uh, are an ability skill that have a long cooldown. Not like an ammo. No, it's not like an ammo thing where you can just throw grenades. It's like so what, you have a grenade and you throw it and what's it goes the law long reason cooldown. for that? They were like mini replicators in their pockets that slowly no creates another play, grenade. Dude. But yeah, I. I the, the, I, mean, to be fair, I guess they're getting rid of like the um the grenade spamming though. So there's like th- there's three classes and then they have subclasses as well. So like, one of my abilities was that I went into like a melee mode where I hit people with a sword, and then one of them was like, a uh, gunslinger where I shot six really strong bullets. Increased that. It's high noon. <laughs> it's twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What you, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but basically. Every I played it and they have like these mini bosses that have like random abilities. I don't know if they're random, but they felt like they were like Lego bricks where they just put them together and they can make infinite amounts of them. <clears throat> but oh, like, so there's like you thought they're like not generic mini bosses, <clears throat> like Borderlands style, yeah. where they, um, they just you know like you, get, like, you know like Borderlands guns. the guns in Borderlands. Yeah. they have they have a property, so they have electricity. Mm-hmm. They have like. It shoots really fast. Well, they're all built of like, of like visual and like mechanical and, components, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so they can create like infinite amounts of guns yeah. by just putting together lots of different parts of a gun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it felt like that. Those felt really bullet spongy. They weren't interesting at so all. So that, that's actually a complaint the first game had was that the, the enemies were, or the bosses yeah. were bullets. Just, they were just bigger versions of things with a little bit more abilities. But mainly just bullet sponges. That's the only reason yeah, why they're a boss. Yeah, a lot of the stuff just felt really bullet spongy. I didn't really feel like I was doing anything. Yeah. And then, like, I wanted to use the assault rifle, so I was using the assault rifle, and then I'd run out of ammo for the assault rifle, and then I'd have to use the other guns I didn't want to use. Oh, okay. Like, it just felt kind so of you bad. have infinite grenades, but ammo for guns. Yeah, you have to pick what? up ammo. <laughs> why not, well, pick up, why, why not make grenades it's, it's ammo made as well, by, then? Um, it's made by... Um, Bungie, right? Uh, Bungie. Yeah. yeah. So they did Halo. Yeah. <laughs> so they like the good ones as well. 
I don't know, man. Like, because they had... You have grenade ammo and Halo. Yeah, I know. That's what's confusing me. And, like, if someone said to me, like, oh, we want to... Re- the next Halo game, we're going to remove grenades, I'd be like... So there's not going to be, like, a community outcry. Because, like, I feel like everyone uses grenades in Halo. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's, that seems really pointless. Like, oh, we're going to have grenades regenerate. Slowly. Mm. So I did fight one boss um, that you can play against. Because there's, like, one boss you can fight against, and then you can do PvP. Okay. So I fought against uh, one boss, and then... It was kind of interesting. He, like, makes the floor disappear, and then he has some mechanics... So he was kind of interesting to play, face, and then did PvP, and PvP is like super unbalanced and really bullshit, and it, it, I didn't really find it that fun at all. Okay. So I don't think I'll be getting the game at all. I, I'm not. I'm. I wasn't really that interested in the first one, but I saw that the no. second one was coming to PC, and I was like, well, maybe if they improve the kind of bullet spongy mechanics and you know they do something interesting with this one because i was really interested when i saw the voice acting talent like the story because they had like nathan fillion yeah and a bunch of like known actors doing mm-hmm. it and they look like really interesting characters but no it's a bad man he's playing off his student lines so canon kind of the, kind of the story kind of... it's gonna be every main major of a I think AAA it's, game it's gonna, gonna get be a the huge story boost of that popularity because um, just because it is um, on it is Destiny Two. It's coming to PC. It's on Battle.net launcher. I think that's a yeah. big thing. Um, I think Steam would have been a bigger thing though if it was coming wanted, to PC. Yeah, I think if they wanted more people, but it's understandable that Activision wants but to probably, put it through their own. Yeah, they probably think they platform. can make more money and get more people to the platform. So I feel like this, this is definitely a, a game that would do very well on Steam. Especially with Steam sales, because Battle.net is doesn't do a lot of sales. They do any In, sales? Yeah, they do do sales. Okay. Like I think Legion's on sale right now at the time of recording this podcast, which is definitely a Sunday. Um, yeah. yeah. Don't 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 ruin the facade. Like, but I, now's not the yeah, time. I, I don't know. Um, I I definitely wouldn't pre. I I always say don't pre order shit, but check check. I'd play the beta, see what you think, and if you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this, just wait for it to come out and see yeah. what you say. I am definitely don't think I'm going to pick up this one. I, I didn't enjoy it that much. No, That's Destiny 2. Me. Next thing I was playing is the 7.3 Argus patch for World of Warcraft. And it's the first week that it's been out, so all I can say is, fuck time-gated content. <laughs> It was Wait, a, is it is this like forever like not just like a testing like it's forever time gated? What, what do you mean? As in like it added content which can only be played at this time and never again. No. Okay. It's okay. time gated as in the first week they release this much of the story. Yeah. And then the second week they release this much of the story and they add uh the new raid or they'll yeah, they'll okay. add the final part of the story and they'll add like the ability You'd to You'd rather just have effects. one big release. I understand why Blizzard does it, but because like if 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 they, they, if they released in. it all at once, people buy one month and stop. People would um, no, because it it releases over the course of a month. I don't think okay. that's the reason. I think it's that people will be really far behind. If right, okay. They added like a bunch of catch up mechanics. Some, they had a lot of like quality of life stuff, which is like really alt friendly. Which is like one of the biggest concerns with Legion was. It was like really hard to make an alt because of how much like AP knowledge grinding you had to do and stuff like that. Right. But now it's like it's just global across all characters. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and they made it so you can do like a couple of world quests on Argus, and you can get a piece of like eight eighty gear. And okay. they've increased like the baseline dungeon level as well. Like baseline dungeon gears, like no, not eight eighty. Sorry, it's um nine ten. Okay. And, um, that doesn't mean very much to me, but I know it's bigger. Numbers. Yeah, it's big. bigger than eight eight. In comparison, is it like a minion in like um, magic? In comparison, the first raid tier for um, this patch was around eight forty. Okay. So some people were annoyed because you can get like a nine ten piece of gear now, which is better than mythic um, emerald nightmare. Like a lot of the raid contents are relevant now. Right, okay. Which some people are getting annoyed with, but, but they, they also want to give got, away they... for new players and people playing yeah. alts to instantly get jump it straight into that, the content. 
but that always it's like it's like total bit like I'm not I'm not gonna say like I know what maybe he disagrees with this, but like I feel like it's what Total Biscuit always says, like if you buy something early you can't expect it like A it's gonna be cheaper later. And it won't be, and for MMOs as well, it's going to be different. Like things have to change to be able to get well, new people some, in. Some people were annoyed that um, that Blizzard's moving from you. You're playing the expansion to you're playing the patch, right? Because like okay. people, when they came into the game, they were playing seven point two, and they've made this massive piece of content now where you're not playing Legion, you're playing seven point three, you're playing yeah. Argus. Um, Is that a bad thing though? I don't think so, but no. I think a lot of older WoW players will disagree. They 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 like the old system. Yeah. Of okay, that makes sense. It seems okay to me. Like it just seems like a, like a new free mini. Well, I think Asma Gold is like a um, big like WoW YouTuber. He was saying he made sure he went through all the content that was released in the first week of Argus, right? So he could complain he had nothing to do. <laughs> Uh, until they release the rest of the content, it's like his intro joke to his video. Okay, but um, yeah, apparently, because like apparently, seven point three is like a, an expansion level patch. Yeah, that's it's what... the final patch of Legion. Okay, in terms of content, I think there'll be some balance patches and some small and then patches. It'll work on the next. It might expansion. be a seven point three point five, maybe. But it won't be like a, a content. But this patch. is the final content patch. Okay, uh, I think for. Um, Legion before the next expansion, which might get uh, announced at BlizzCon, which is in November. Fingers. Crossed. I always forget it's in November. I'll be honest with you. Well, I always think it's in October for some reason. Uh, I think I said this last year as well. Um, Gamescom is in August. Yeah, at the end of August. It's always in August. And last Gamescom is when they released Legion. They announced Legion at Gamescom. Oh yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this year they just. There's a bunch of Blizzard stuff that got announced. Um, so this year at Gamescom, they were they showed off seven point three before it came out, and they were yeah. like, "By the way, it's coming out in a couple of weeks." Yeah, and everyone was like, "What?" Like it's a massive patch. People yeah. have actually realized because there was like conspiracy theories that um, I think it was like every so many days, every like seventy days or something, Blizzard was consistently releasing a patch. If there was two teams, what? I'm trying to just guess the conspiracy theories before you say it. No. <laughs> okay. What's the, the conspiracy, conspiracy theory? theory was that they were releasing a patch every seventy days. What they're trying to guess? They like, they the consistently thing. found that because there was two patches that came out the same time apart, and they were okay. like, "Oh, that's just coincidence." But this patch came out exactly the same amount of time again, so it looks like they are actually on a schedule. They're trying to put it onto a schedule where they're consistently releasing okay. a patch on schedule. Anyway, to be fair, maybe that's because they felt like the time stuff that happened with Warbirds of Dionysus, hmm. like they want, like, oh, if we if we keep stuff consistent, people will keep looking at the same times and keep coming back. Hmm. But the th- when they were the thing is the, the reason Warbirds of Dionysus, Wall of Drain, <laughs> um, was so unsuccessful <laughs> was because when they were supposed to be working on. Uh, uh, drain or they were making legion because yeah. they had this idea that they were going to make an expansion every year yeah uh which turned out to be a really stupid idea because Doesn't. you can't support the current content while making an entirely new expansion. yeah because you have to pull everyone away to make the next one which means you just have a year of nothing mm. i guess mm-hmm. but i feel like maybe like maybe some meeting was like oh we need to keep stuff consistent but yeah anyway went away from what, what they did this with 7.2 where you came into the first week and you were like i'm gonna do a bunch of stuff and it's like come back next yeah. week they, they 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 have like consistently added some like time gate stuff like they've added the class order hall where mm-hmm. you have to wait for missions and stuff what i'm not a fan of like no. i know like uh bell you has talked about this in some of his wild videos where he would rather, instead of having it so come back next day, he would rather have it so uh, the way you gated the content was by making it so you could keep progressing towards it. Just just make it longer, the time oh. the time investment you have to put in, but okay. make it so you can keep making progress towards it, no matter what you I do. Like they could have made it, like you could go and do it yourself, or you could make it an automated thing, which takes longer. So you didn't, if you thought if you thought the no, there, there is some points in the game where you just you just have to wait. Okay. Which is like where the time gating concerns coming in because I think next week is where we're seeing more of the story. At the moment, you can you can world quest in two areas on Argus, and we're waiting for them to add the third area 
and okay. there's a new dungeon, a new raid. Uh, there's pet battle shit they released in the first week, which right. I haven't touched because I don't pet battle. You're not, you're not a Pokemon master. Um, the thing is with Pokemon is I, I'm always like, <laughs> well, when I run out of things to do, I'll do pet battles, but then I never run out of things to do, usually. You, you give up before then, or do there's no, still stuff I, to do? No, I usually find something to do. Like, okay. I'll start a new character and level them up. I actually really enjoy leveling. Have they um, added any new classes for a while? Or like they only have had a class with an expansion. So it is just they do add expansions, not like in between. No. Okay. This expansion they had the Demon Hunter. Yeah. Which starts at level hundred. Right. Because they wanted to get people to come back and play it, so you can instantly jump into Legion content with the Demon Hunter. Okay. Next expansion should be them adding a new race because they usually go race class, race class, race class. Okay. But with Draenor, they didn't add anything. Didn't pandas add, like, a race and a class? Yes. They added both. But only, like, one race, because it could be both sides. Yeah. It was um, multi-faction. Shout out to the, my boy, Double Agent. There is one Pandaren player who, when he was asked to choose a faction at the end of the panda starting zone, he refused to pick a faction, glitched out of the starting zone... <laughs> Couldn't do quests because he had no faction and had to level up by gathering herbs. <laughs> He's now level 110 in like green panda gear, um, panda starting zone gear, and he still doesn't have a faction to this day. Wow. Shout out to double agent. Fa- fa- factionless. He's double agent or just no agent? Like He's like, he's like the panda. His name, no... his name is double agent. Yeah, no, but he, he can rename himself the panda of no banners. The Panda Without Banners. Yeah. That should be his title. No, <laughs> Double Agent, the Panda Without Banners, breaker of terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great title. Uh, King Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terms of service breaker. Uh, what else today? Is there anything I want to say? Because, uh, oh, it's really good for, yeah, alts. So I was leveling up my... Um, I was getting my druid geared because they because they basically completely rebalanced feral druid because feral druid had a really high skill ceiling, right? And it was really hard for newer players to play to get any damage out of it, so they changed a bunch of abilities and just increased its damage by like thirty three percent. Okay, right. So is it not... they were underperforming a lot. Oh, okay. And they oh another cool thing they did this patch was I noticed was um, they had a bunch more animations for casters because they completely like overhauled. All the, all the melee animations. Yeah. Uh, I, rem- I remember that, yeah. And now they've, they're like, I was playing on my mage, like, they've added, like, and there's a new Blizzard animation, there's new sounds as well. Wait, when, you, when you say Blizzard, you mean, like, the, the spell Blizzard? Yeah. And not. Yeah. There's, 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 a, there's, there's, there's two Blizzards. I think what? there's only two Blizzard spells in Blizzard games, unless there might be one in Diablo. Because um, how's it? Two, what two blizzards in like two in WoW? Was that one in WoW and one in? No, there's one in Overwatch. It's uh, oh okay, the woman who must not be named because I was pronounce her name wrong. May. Yeah. Uh, her ultimate is called Blizzard, I think. Okay. Let me check. I'll just double check. You know, she has May. a blizzard. You don't want to search for May cosplay then. No, no, no. No, no. What well, it might be called something else. Yes, her alt's called Blizzard. Okay. Which is kind of confusing, but not too confusing to the company Bl- Activision Blizzard. <laughs> but yeah, Blizzard's an AOE ability that Frost, well, they, Frost they, Majors have. They need like a, like a spell called like Activist. Yeah, they, they need a spell <laughs> called Activision Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I want to say. Like Mo- Monaheim's Fury. What? There's no like um, ice... Class in Diablo is there? Like uh, you... There's a, there's a wizard, and I think it, I've never I haven't really played too much of wizard, but I think they might have an ice spell. They definitely have like wizard beams, shit. Wizard. I think I thought you said wizard beams for a second. Wizard beams, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the heroes of the storm has one. I think Jaina has um, it, but she's just a mage. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Doesn't, doesn't, really he doesn't topic. seem to be. But yeah, there's an ability called Blizzard in Blizzard games. It's yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> um, anyway, while you're looking at your screen now, I think that's 
that's like one. Of, this is Argos right now. One thing I'm kind of yeah, I, I the, want to the, see, the shopping center. I want it, yeah Argos. <laughs> a lot of people have made that joke. I hope we made it last time. I think as well. Yeah. I don't know. I understand Argos is like the home world of the Legion, so it's a giant growing green rock. But when all of the environment is giant green growing rock, it's I'm too kind, much. I'm of kind of yeah. They could have done something more. It's interesting like you know, you know, like because the broken shore is like I don't know, like. The Broken Shore is like a giant brown yeah. rock with green glowing on it, right? Because it's the Legion. And then you go to their home world and it's like more green grown rocks. It'd, it'd be like, I'm excited to see the new world. It'd be like, um, I'll make a Star Trek reference here, but it'd be like, you know, like the Borg, but like, they all, like everything looks kind of the same, like every, every drone looks the same. You would still mm. make like the Borg home planet look different, even though it's got the same looking art style, I guess. Yeah, I'm excited to see the, the new zone in Argus, McCree, when it unlocks. McCree. Yeah, McCree. <laughs> so I think that one's different. It's not just. Is it? Um, I th- I think it's actually not green growing rocks. Hang on, I'll go. Is, is it high noon like the whole time there, or if you look at this, like that's just really cool, actually. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this zone because it's where the new dungeon is as well. Yeah. Uh, this is unlocking tomorrow, so I'm definitely gonna check this out. So you're you're not gonna be alive tomorrow then? No, Wednesday's always patch day, so I will be. Is it Wednesday? Is when, yeah, how is yeah, Wednesday yeah. patch day if tomorrow is not Wednesday? Uh, because it's like um, five in the morning on Tuesday, I think. Okay. Because it's always like ridiculously early in the morning on that day. But surely if they're... What do you say in the night? Yeah, but if they're in the, like in America, so it's like, like close to midnight. Their, their patch is different. It always, it, in the UK, it always happens at... Um, Wednesday early morning. Yeah, like... Okay. Uh, but I assume it'd be Tuesday night it's like, in America. Uh, it's around like two or three until five, around that time. Argus. They always do it when nobody's playing, but it's usually when I'm playing. It just says Argos McCree. Like you could just put, like buy an Argos McCree skin. Get Mac Mackay. How do you pronounce that actually? Uh, Macari. Macari. I think you're right the first time. It's hi Argus. Yeah. Yeah. Go and get your free pencils from Argos. Anyway, you meant to, you meant to steal on. pencils from Argos? Oh, so I was going to talk about quickly. Uh, there'll be a new spotlight out in the next couple of weeks uh, where I'm playing the Prey demo. There's a new demo out it's for Prey. It's actually really long. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually... I'm more interested in it now than... What, like, I want to just say quickly because we're going to move on pretty quickly, but they should have had a demo from day one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll actually maybe be interested we, in we, it we, from we, day one. We were beefing on Arcane because they said the Steam refund policy was a alternative to a demo. And then it came out, didn't do as well as they were hoping. No. Uh, I think, based on this, and they've released a demo. Yeah. They're calling it a, a trial. Can but I Steam just calls say, it a demo. I hate this new trend of calling demos and things that are going through to play like Battleborn Trials. Because yeah. they are, they're not trials. Trials are they, only... they are just demos. Trials are for like subscription stuff. Like you're gonna have like a month free trial. Yeah. And then demos are like you've got like oh you, this amount of content is is free trials to, to test me is it out. Trials like a you get access to the whole game gated yeah. at a certain time or yeah. level. And normally the game is like it's a subscription based normally. Mm. And then free to play is again something completely different. Battleborn. Mm. Looking at you. Not a trial in the slightest. So yeah, this is a demo. It's not a trial like at all. It's a, it's definitely a demo. Yeah. Anyway, so, so there'll be a spotlight out soon of me playing the Prey demo. Check that out. Okay, it's Game of Thrones time. Oh, no, okay. So we got Matt's next conspiracy theory. Conspiracy or game of conspiracies, I guess. Conspiracy... Theories with Matt about ga- usually about Ed Sheeran. That's why we got the picture. So I'll just read that out now for you. So Matt says the title is Game of Thrones director is killed by the Illuminati and George R. R. Martin is a- is in Guantanamo. Okay, is that confirmed? Confirmed. Yeah. Matt says, guys, an apology. I was on holiday, but here you go. So Matt was on holiday in Bulgaria. Um, yeah, because he was a week ago. Yeah. Um, we still can't get him on, but we do want him on. Uh, so he says, so this season I did not like very much, but at the same time, I did. 
<laughs> this got me thinking. I was on a plane today. I, I, Saturday, I actually the really second liked, of September. I actually really liked this season, like just as a for that. And there. pondered about the directors. They'd been killed by the Illuminati. What makes you think that, Matt? Your god of Game of Thrones theories that have never been disproved in any way. And then Matt wanted me to make this picture of... Um, I've basically zoomed in. Yeah, well, whatever. You zoomed um, out, actually, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that have not been disproved in any way. And then he wanted me to show a picture of Ed Sheeran photoshopped into a dragon. Can... Might break it, but... Uh, so it all became clear the directors were dead when I watched the entirety of Game of Thrones Season 7 and backwards to listen to the secret messages. If you listen to Ed Sheeran's scene backwards in the song, you hear some words. Rest in peace, Game of Thrones directors. They got you good. <laughs> they red weddinged your ass. Uh, um, so Matt says, I did some research into this and I began to make sense. And it all begins with Ed. Ed was part of a bigger picture in Game of Thrones. Also, our good friends, the Illuminati. If you watch an episode with an 18 um, time zoom in slow motion. We're not friends um, with the Illuminati. They're not good friends. Let me finish. They're not... They're not work colleagues. Sorry, continue. If you watch the episode with an ancient time zoom in slow motion, we see some very strange shadows above Ed's shoulder. Two men being stabbed. <laughs> These shadows are the directors of Game of Thrones, which is scary. Also, a triangle appears a moment later. Illuminati added that last part. Okay. Furthermore, it would also explain why hardly any major characters died this season. We all know that everyone's favourite characters are meant to die, and nothing <laughs> good happens. Yet this season felt oddly, weirdly joy joyous in parts. The White Walkers are finally through the wall. Is that joyous? The little guy won and rose Did above he? the haters. Did good he? job. John and Danny thought... banged. We got to see <laughs> one of the worst scenes and probably the best scenes in Game of Thrones with John calling Big D Danny, made me laugh. It was was that really? It was happy. Was that... Therefore, the directors are dead. When did he call it Danny? Also, George, get on with finishing the books. I'm bored of this happy attitude. Bring back Ed Sheeran, Matt. And he also says, P.S. Blue icy fire does not melt big ice walls, just saying. Yeah, it was an inside job. Right, safe questions to the end, Tony. What have you got to say? I'm a bit confused when he says it was joyous to see the undead, the White Walkers go through the wall. Is that what he meant, or have I like misunderstanding? No, he's saying it's joyous that a lot of characters won over evil and that a lot of bad characters died. Oh, okay. Did a lot yeah. of bad characters die? You haven't seen the final episode. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I told Tony this has got spoilers in it. Does it? I still haven't been. Have I been? Oh, oh other I than told then, you the spoiler. Yeah, other than that about Daenerys and Ed. Yeah. Uh, not Ed, John. Oh, you can call him Meg if you want. No, I don't want to call. Him. <laughs> not, wait, wait, maybe, maybe John is Ed Sheeran. He's a Targaryen. Egg. Wait, Sheeran. wait, wait, wait. John is a Targaryen, right? Keep me with you here. John, well, we knew, is, John, knew, John is Aegon Targaryen. We knew, we knew he was a Targaryen last season. We now Targaryens, know Targaryens, you know, dragons and fire, right? Yeah. They say people in the Game of Thrones universe, people with ginger hair are very, um, are very rare. They've been touched by fire. Ed Sheeran's got ginger hair. He could be a Targaryen. He could be... The lost Targaryen. He could be Aegon Targaryen. He could be Jon Snow. That's where he went. Wait, what? Blood magic. Got us all well, into John. No, no, but, no, but, but, but John's died. So maybe what you don't know what happens after they get resurrected. Maybe like a new person gets in their place, and the real John Snow is Ed Sheeran. You're saying they've done a face off. Yeah, there's a different soul instead of John. The Nicolas Cage, um, John Travolta movie. Yeah. Wow. We're uncovering some real shit today. Anyway, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's a really interesting theory, and I think it's 100% proven fact. <laughs> I want to see these the shadows. The Game of directors are dead. I'm, I'm interested killed. he didn't show us the evidence of this, these shadowy triangles and directors being killed. When has he ever made anything up? This is all factually correct. Okay. These are his conspiracy theories. They're always right. 
you know. Is it? I haven't seen the last. I've seen the last scene. Hey, the, one of the last scenes with the the the, the undead dragon just in the yeah, wall. But is it fire or is it like ice magic? It's ice. Okay. Because the dragon shoots out ice fire. Ice yeah, because I would out. assume like if they would have like one of the um, I don't know, like the Ice King family, whatever mm. they're flipping called. Um, because they they do seem to be a family, right? I'm not just making that. They're up. a they, happy family. Yeah. Not they're like a silent family, right? And they I, so I'd assume that, that one of them would ride the dragon, and then they would like both of them would use their magic in tandem. Here's a conspiracy theory I know people have. Some people think that um, Bran is the um, is the is the Ice King. What? Yeah, they think like he is the Ice King. That's like a weird like conspiracy theory. How does that work? I don't know. I always thought like the three-eyed raven, Bran Stark. Yeah, yeah. I always thought the guy that he met in the last season was actually him. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. But I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Well, maybe it's just. Raven maybe it was, maybe it's just one, one. What Three Red Raven has to like pass on the title to someone else hmm. with a, like with the vision. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we will know someday. I don't know. We may never know if George R. R. Martin dies and has been killed by the Illuminati, or is in Guantanamo Bay. Do you Bay. think he'll like have his own mm-hmm. cameo? George R. R. Martin. Yeah. No. No, he's yeah, not think. the type of guy. He's not like a Stan Lee or an Alfred Hitchcock. He's not just going to walk into a scene and be like, <laughs> "Ah, yeah, how's it going?" <laughs> how about Stan Lee's like cameos kind of aren't like too bad though? Because like, he's just like oh, a they, really like minor they, character. They've been getting a lot worse though. Like, have they? He's like ha- seen... he's like ham fisted into. Oh, uh, I haven't seen the new ones. Any of anything of Marvel stuff? So, wow, nice suit. Like, he says stuff like that. He's like, wow, look at that guy. Nice suit. <laughs> in what? I'm trying to remember what, which you, one You're, you're quoting um, Red Lair Media, aren't you? Am I? In... You sound like the like the um, the main guy who, who does the Plinker voice. Maybe he was in, it was in Spider-Man. Maybe, Maybe I'm man. quoting Mr. Plinker instead of Stan Lee. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Spider-Man, nice suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. think... I think we can all agree Matt is probably correct. We should move on. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, yeah. Which part of the moving on is always correct? Neither. Oh, okay. There's so much more to say. I've said to Matt, <laughs> we, need we need him on to talk about Podrick Bain. We need, we he's need, a more key character than yeah. people realise. We need him on the podcast so we can like have like we can like talk off each other and have the discussion. The yeah. important Game of Thrones conspiracy consu- um, discussions. Not consumptions. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to talk about Gamescom more, actually, with Blizzard. So you got me talking about that. I wanted to just go over quickly. You want to... Because in our Overwatch, we saw Deathmatch. Um, we saw the new Junkertown um, map. We saw the new May Short. Uh, so we saw 7.3 with Argus. Uh, there's a lot of Blizzard shit. Um, Heroes of the Storm, we saw Kelfazad, and we saw Dreadlord Jaina, the skin... And we saw an amazing animation as well. But yeah, that was pretty cool. That's all I wanted to say. You don't even need to write a timestamp for that. No, I'm doing it anyway. Okay. You can't stop right, me. Right, next, next topic. Pete Molyneux news. Patron of the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so Pete Molyneux, I think we said this before, but he, he visited uh, Sean Murray. In the, he said he had like sympathy for Sean Murray. He went and visited Sean Murray in the Backlash, and um, he talked to him and kind of helped him. And he and he also uh, he he was having like um, an exile from media where he wasn't talking to them. But he's recently started talking to the press again. Um, so he talked to PC Gamer about his press exile, uh, No Man's Sky, and it's also the, when bringing. He says the, exile it implies that the press like no, we don't want to talk to you anymore. He's exiled so. himself. Yeah, he's exiled himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means he's t- he took a step back from the media, which is completely something completely different. But he makes it sound like he was forced to by he was the media. Like, he was blacklisted. Yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> he blacklisted himself. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, very he, clever with words. He's, there, he's Peter. basically he's basically talking about the trial because we said last week the trial was now on Steam, and I was I, like, I like how we're just calling it the trial now. 
Oh, the trail, sorry. <laughs> um, and he, I was saying, I'm fairly sure it was free to play on mobile, and it was. Yeah. So he, he's just, but in the article, he's, if you want to read it, I'll just quickly go for some points, and then you can read it in depth. If you're a big Peter Molyneux, if you want to pause the video and start listening to us rant, rant on about Peter Molyneux. He apparently he caught up with me, Peter Molyneux over Skype. Skype in 2017. What's what are you doing, on? Peter? Get on Discord, Pete. <laughs> Pete, talk to me. We'll set up a Discord server. We'll have a chat. <laughs> Uh, basically, he was saying like how he changed the trail from uh, the mobile version to the premium PT version when they took out the microtransactions yeah. and they made it into a you know a, a game you just buy. Um, they talked about um, uh, not hyping up the trail, and he's saying like when he took a step back from the media, he was able to get back into coding again. Yeah, and he didn't want to overhype it. Like could like he did with like Goddess or Curiosity. Well to be fair, he had to, kind of had to be Goddess because it was kickstarted, right? He says like um it's like incredibly uh bad to overhype a game these days. It's just better to make a good game and then just release it. Yeah. Anyway. Is the trailer a good game though? Uh I think it I think it's an alright like game it. for sure. It's a good mobile game, good walking simulator, if you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I don't know, I haven't played I want to play it, but I don't want to buy it. And I don't have a phone There's that no can demo run it. either. I don't have a phone that can run it, so. Anyway. Next topic uh, is something. <laughs> oh, City Skylines. <laughs> this is my topic, yeah. City uh, Skylines uh, DLC. Technically, it's not. Cities. It's not just. So, this is going to be a Paradox Gamescom segment, quickly. So, oh, I'll start with this. Actually, looks really good. It's um an expansion for Sea Skies. Apparently, they've wanted to do this from the start. But they wanted to add other stuff for what the fans wanted first, like um destruction, mass, more more transport stuff, more trees. So this, no, this is now this is the more trees. They're actually they're actually adding more trees yeah, into yeah. this. There's more trees in this. They look beautiful. They haven't put them in the in the um, more trees mod. They haven't put it in the um the screenshot for some reason. But the trees are really good. Um, it's really weird because I know, actually now know who made this city and like how like superficial and like not real it is because <laughs> mm. I've actually seen it. But um, yeah, so this is the basically you can have like um more self sufficient zones or, or districts where like you have they're, like they're having like the Japan style where they're putting like gardens on roofs. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, they've also got more solar panels, more energy, so you get healthy less... weeds. Yeah, um, they've got like like a new super duper. Oh, look at the basketball. They've got new super duper outlet pipes for like, water sewage and things as well. Mm. It's basically, it's like, it's like parents, like, it's like, I think at the end of this, it's like, yeah, like 200 new buildings, which means like when you play, play I want like buildings here, like it has like different stages. That's what it means basically. And there's also placeable buildings yourself. So it's, that's all included in that 200. 200. But it looks, it's actually really, really interesting because I think that this will change the game. In a weird way. How much is it going to cost? It doesn't say yet. Right? Uh, coming, I don't know. I would, coming soon. I would assume like £10, £12 or £10 something. £10 for trees. 200 new buildings. The thing is, isn't this like a massively modded game? Do people yeah. still buy all the DLC that could be modded in? Yeah. Interesting. One thing, actually, yeah, that's, you remind me. One thing that's interesting <laughs> with this, they're adding a new um, park type. Right. Or a building type. They've right. got a new... They've got like a garbage collector. Um, obviously, I'd call it a rubbish collector, but um, they, that, which they put you put on the water and like collect sewage in like really still lakes, so right. that can clear up the sewage. But they've made in doing in doing that, they've made a new building type which actually just floats on the water. So you can now but in the free tech cities. So well, sort of. You could with modded stuff. You probably could but in the free patch. They're adding a park, which is basically like a a cafe in the sea. So you place right. it on the land and it has like a little part like just like floating. So the modders can like take that bit of code that makes it float and like go, oh, you can add new buildings, really. And new assets, new buildings for that. So you, you could... You can make Atlantis. Yeah. You can make Venice. Yeah. So that that is interesting. Venice is like sinking. falling in... Yeah, it's like sinking into the ocean. Yeah. It doesn't have long left unless they have like a huge engineering... Structural... Thing. Yeah, like like a Japanese style or, huge or thing. There's big change to climate change. I still don't think it's gonna help because it's still like it's still sinking by itself without. Do you see that change. art project that was like they showed 
hands. Um, hands keep, in a keeping, man. keeping up a building. Oh, no. I think I read about it on a on a um, plane actually. That's going to be hard to find a picture of. Um, Just type hands in a man. Hands coming out of the water. Here we go. What the f the fuck is a song? That's actually really creepy. So it was like an art project to like show um, the um, the the water trying to like drag the buildings down in, into like um, the water, and it was like to try and tell people about like the climate change and the building structure that needs to be updated to keep Venice from sinking, basically. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. I I um I'll carry on with the other paradox section. So there's other. T I'll go for the other expansion. Oh god, I've lost myself. You, you've gone too there far. Go. Well, the other expansion thing that's coming out is for. Um, Can I find it on Steam? It's, just, it's it's called Synthetic Dawns for Stellaris. So just that's Stellaris. It should there should be an image for that. Um, I think they have got an image. If you go scroll down to the DLC section, I think they have got Synthetic Dawn. Yep, we got it. Okay. So yeah, that that that's been I think announced for a while, I guess. But they showed like way more of it out like, at Gamescom, so we can actually see like all the mechanics and stuff, or at least most of the mechanics. That looks really interesting. Um, I'm not going too much into de in detail because you probably already know about it if you care about it. But you can play as the Borg now with this DLC. I am the cute as a Borg. You can assimilate people as an as, as a single-minded robotic species. Is this these guys on the screen now? Uh. I don't know what those guys are on the screen right now. They're the Borg, aren't they? I have no idea. Oh, I thought like, they don't. They never explain it in the trailer what the hell they're doing in those pods. That seems like something a Borg would do, right? I don't know. It's not what they do. They make them in the game. They just they they go like they you start with four like the original species basically are assimilated and they're cyborgs. Right. And they're also hive minds. You can then go and like kill go and attack other planets, and take them and then convert them into being cyborgs. Hmm. You can also play a Skynet. Well, Skynet. Do, yeah, so you just you hate all organics, you want to destroy organics, but you, you can be friendly with other robots. And there's so it's also all about like AI and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And the other one is you can be Wally, or the next stage of Wally, where you you, you take control. The robots take control of the government because the, the the humans can't think for themselves anymore, so they're being right. pampered by the robots. But another. I guess sci-fi news, a different game. I don't think it's, I don't think it's on Steam yet, but it's called like Surviving Mars, which is like really interesting. I can it might have a look. It's, it's like thing. um a Martian. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Steam. it is on Steam. Yeah. But look at those domes. That looks so this cool. Is paradox as well, is it? Yeah, it's all paradox. Um. I think it's really cool because you, you have to at the start of the game you have to like choose so it's what materials to send up. city builder. Yeah. Okay. But it actually, like, feels more like you are isolated from Earth opposed to other city builders in space. Where it's like, oh, you, it, you still have everything. Is it the city skylines guys? Is these different no, it's this different people okay. entirely. I think I think it's if you just want to scroll down, I think it does say who. Uh, I don't know who that is. High but Mont the, Games. They do Tropico. Oh, okay, the Tropico people. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So the Tropico guys are making this. Yeah, and they're being they're trying to be as accurate as possible to like today technology and stuff. I mean, look it at looks those very the, the Martian, you know the yes, um, yes. The, the film with um, Mad Damon. Yeah, yeah. It, I just think it looks so. Like, it looks really cool, and the, the domes and things look really good. But that's my that's my um that's all of the stuff I'm interested in with the paradox news though. So okay. Next, if you want to carry on. Topic is I think it's just Battle.net is back, baby. Yep. So <laughs> we talked about it suddenly, but they basically Blizzard just said the Battle.net app wasn't catching on because people Battle.net was just too ingrained in people's minds. Well, it's um, all, it's also empirically a better name. They even called it Battle.net when Destiny Two was revealed. They said it was going to be on Battle.net. <laughs> is, is that like a slip or was that a? No, I think they're just they're just going fuck it. We're going back to Battle.net anyway. Okay. Warcraft Three is finally getting its own PTR. So the this really old game from two thousand and two now has its own PTR and it's receiving updates, which is really cool. I would love to see them put this on the Battle.net launcher. Yeah, why isn't it? Do you think? Uh, 
time. Just incompatible or no, at the moment? I, it's just too much time for nothing. Okay. It's going to make the money. Okay. Uh, Rock of Ages 2 has come out. I said on my um, notes it was coming out on 28th of August, but that is now. It's out now. And yep. Apparently it's fantastic. Uh, check out our spotlight of Rock of Ages. It's just come out recently. Yeah, last so week. from what we can tell, Rock of Ages 2 is more of the same, a little bit polished graphics, works better with modern systems, same humour, same... Similar art style, but like updated. Multiplayer high as well. And has split screen and multiplayer, I think. Online and local. Yeah. Those are the features, right? Yeah. There. And has a Binding of Isaac DLC as well. Where oh, you can okay. have Binding of Isaac cool. um, boulders. It has a few changes, like like there's oh, now like a little bit of voice of acting in the I stories. Lo- I love this art style, like Fango's uh, Night Sky. Yeah. I really like that. The the the, the surreal one is. My, I can't remember his name now. Like Salvador. Uh, Salvador Darby. Darby. Yeah, I really. That's my that's my favorite art style and stuff. It looks so good in that in that game. Yeah. And again, Van Van Gogh is also a pretty good one as well. Actually, I, I won't lie. Shout out <laughs> to the guys at Ace Team. Yeah, aren't they? Um, what country are they based in? Like they're in like South America, aren't they? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. No, I don't know. But I swear it was somewhere in South America. Like Cuba or something. Maybe they are Tropica. Maybe. What are you trying to say? I don't know. It does. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Like I like the updated graphics. It has the same style, it, but if, it looks more polished. Yeah, way more polished. Yeah. I think <laughs> if you like um, Rock of Ages One, you're gonna love this. I don't know if I'm gonna like it though, because I you still have to do like the tower defense stuff, right? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it, it doesn't. I don't think it's I just not, like rolling the boulder. Yeah, I would. I would There's say new boss fights and stuff as well. Yeah, from what I've seen, like it's it's not. It's still like Rock of Ages one. We don't have. Well, you don't have to like. You don't really have to do the the defenses. You don't have to think about it too much. I think I would definitely you, love to play the multiplayer. Yeah, but you can just go like, oh, I just want to put these big massive elephants down. That sounds good. You, that 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 can be your tactic. Like, who yeah, doesn't want I, to put elephants? You lose down? a lot though if you. Don't actually. You do have to do some micromanaging on the RTS bit. Yeah, you do do some, but I think you can just. You if you're just if you want to focus on the, the boulder, I think you can do that as well. I just like smashing things. Yeah. I just want to destroy, not create. Because so the, the maps are all. Oh, you get a cube. Yeah. That's crazy. But I think the maps are, and like the the actual complexity of the maps are more in, in more detailed and more d- differing from level to level now, opposed to it being kind of similar. Yeah. Binding Vibes stuff looks really good though. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> anyway, Shenmue 3 has secured publishing deal with Saints Row 3 outfit. So they've secured a uh, publishing deal with Deep Silver. Uh, that still exists. It's coming out sometime. Next is Brink is now free to play on Steam. Did you ever see that coming? I forgot it existed. I remember, didn't I? Yeah, I, didn't I say to you, I was like, wait, that's still going? Yeah, <laughs> apparently Brink is now free to play if you want to play it. Uh, okay. Well, next. At least it's not called a trial. Yeah. Uh, Congregate launched 10 million publishing fund to expand their PC and console lineup. They are always popular with their Flash games, but they've been acquired by the Swedish entertainment giant MTG, not to be confused with Magic the Gathering. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a bit confusing. Uh, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, they got bought 55 million. We reported on that a couple of weeks ago. But now now expanding onto the PC and console market. Uh with the launch of their game Grid uh, Retro Enhanced on Steam and Xbox One. Uh, next piece of topic is Amazing Eternal. So the guys um, behind um, Warframe are now making a four-player... Uh, I think it's four-player? It's, it's a co-op wave shooter with card-based... My name is um, and I'm the lead designer with these Yeah, it's like it's, card-based it's just so weird uh, system me. where you choose what you want. And then every wave, you like change your abilities. I love the art style. I think it looks. Yeah, no, the art style I really like. I'm just concerned about the mechanics. I just want. I, I want to see more of that. Yeah, I got my mind. They were like, we've got a really expensive free. T- we got a load of money with through Warframe with microtransactions. transactions. Let's make a, something with a card game in it so we can sell a bunch of packs. Well, we should just make a shooter and then put packs into it. Yeah, that's what everyone wants. Yeah. I do think it actually looks fun. It looks really cool. 
I'm just yeah. I've always been a throwback. I just feel like, was, like kind of it's, the they're really good. These this like their dev the teams are really good at art. I think like and look like looking different from everyone. Well, I'm gonna check it out because I'm fairly sure it's free to play as well. Yeah, yeah, it's free. It's free. Yeah. I so think, it's in beta at the moment. And yeah, what did you want to say? I say if it's free to play and it's from these guys, I think their their free to play model is normally quite. Good. You can see like a, you can see a warframe yeah. behind this guy right now. It's more of a crotch shot though. Yeah, yeah, that's my. <laughs> anyway, uh, PS4 uh, firmware update 5.0 now adds 1080p 60fps uh, Twitch streaming. Uh, it's now officially announced. So if you want to check that out, check that out. That's pretty cool. You can. Do we we have any experience FPS. with this, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't own a PS4. No, I don't, I don't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Sonic Mania was originally delayed when I wrote this down until August 29th, but it is out now, and apparently it has um, de novo on it, so it has DRM on it, and there was a bug that required you that you couldn't launch it in offline mode without going online and logging in, but they fixed that bug. So Sonic Mania is on PC, and from what I've heard, it's fantastic. So I definitely want to get that. No one's really talked about like the DRM side of it, though. Uh, Battlefield 1 has been added to Origin Access. So, you know, T our boys TF2, Time for <laughs> 2, is also yeah. on EA Access. It might be worth picking it up uh, now, getting EA Access, if that's your sort of thing. Uh, Armor 3 has a new DLC that I have no idea what it's about, but I thought I'd add it in case you're interested in Armor. Yeah. Call of Duty is... I read on Kotaku that Call of Duty is now giving out loot boxes for watching other people what open loot boxes. Uh, it's kind of confusing. I I I definitely gonna wait until we get more information before I go in, in depth talking about this. But um, yeah, that's kind of. Do you not always want to just watch someone else open a loot box? I, I actually kind of like. I've seen videos of people opening loot boxes. Like, I'd like watching somebody open a pack on Hearthstone. Yeah. Like, spectating my friend. Yeah, wouldn't it be great Hearthstone. if you got you got more stuff for doing that? I'd actually love it more if my quests could com be completed on Hearthstone by me spectating other people. <laughs> I spectate more people on Hearthstone than I play Hearthstone. Yeah. I prefer spectating backseat gaming and then shit-talking people. And then While just I'm not playing. And then, then just blame it on Because sometimes, sometimes, you know, you, you go into Overwatch and you just want to spectate your friend. And then in the all chat, you just start shit talking people. I, I'll be honest, there's like, sometimes like, I'm like, oh, this, this, this game I own, but I don't know how to play it. I'll just watch, I'll just watch Michael play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of a big topic. So Mass Effect Andromeda has stopped development now. Yeah. It's uh, gone. Mass Effect Andromeda in the latest patch is the final patch. Is this the end of Mass Effect? It's weird though because normally you would expect like like right this is this is the end of the updates you're like oh we're now we're not announcing DLC but they're not no they're not making any more DLC no more updates and I think it may be the end of Mass Effect as a maybe as a as a universe as a game depending on the success of Anthem their next yeah because game. the the main Bioware team is like all pulled into yeah Anthem, Anthem so they might be the main devs behind that now. Unless they get new devs for... I think they're putting, like all their, stuff, they're, but... they're putting all their eggs into the Anthem basket now. And depending on how successful that is, we may see a return of Mass Effect. We may see I feel it. like EA is really bad at resource... Like, resource management. No, yeah, they're just really bad at resource management. They I haven't... Feel. They This is definitely the end of Andromeda, but they haven't said for definite that Mass Effect is the... Fi the Mass Effect Andromeda is the final Mass Effect game. No, but... I'm just assuming it's they're moving away yeah. from it. It's insane because they're not... They've put enough... Like, EA loves DLC. Yeah, for these types of games, and they're them, they're moving away from it for some reason. Oh, uh, is uh, update one point one zero was the final update? Yeah, you want to know uh, anything else? You you're a big, but you said you'd be upset if they didn't make another yeah game I'm, because you're a big fan of the massive. Uh, Bioware, Mass I really like the universe to create, and I I would always want I'd be open to like another game like in both Dragon Ages and Mass Effect's universe, but again. What they've already got is already fantastic, so I'm not going to be like, oh, I need more. Mm. But it, I would like to see more, I guess, how, is what I'm how, trying to say. How are we doing for time, by the way? Um, we've got... Four, it's, quarter, 
One hour and quarter so far. Okay, well, we'll move on. Uh, Cyanide and Happiness is making a game, and it looks similar to the Stick of Truth. It could be similar to the Stick of Truth. It has similar humour. So. I really like Cyanide and Happiness. I love their comics. I love their their animations on their YouTube. Um, so I'd definitely be interested to see a kind of adventure game with the cyanide and happiness humour. That's what makes Stick of Truth so fantastic. Yeah. Was it had the South Park humour with a really solid gameplay mechanics. And I heard that they're improving the gameplay mechanics for the fractured butthole. Yeah. And that makes me really excited because I know Matt and Trey are really funny, so it's going to be funny either way. Yeah. It, it's... A yeah, uh, someone also likes Cyanide and Happiness. It is, looks really good. I'll just good. check. Um, it's coming to Kickstarter. Oh, that's my main it's character. My I'm Ted. So you can fit in and not draw attention to yourself. I I wouldn't do that if I were. Update some more information. Yeah. Kickstarter coming September 5th. It, the Kickstarter for this comes out tomorrow. Yeah. So I will check back that, maybe post on Twitter or something, or maybe talk about in the next podcast uh, what it's like. I feel like this is going to get backed. I want to back this. I want to back this. Yeah. I'm really interested to see about that. Uh, maybe yeah. I should back this. So League of Legends recently, uh, so for the longest time, they had the skin um, Striker Lucian which was a football-themed skin for the World Cup, and they kind of confirmed that it was uh, kind of a... Um, what's the word? Homage? Not an homage, maybe. Um, it was kind of inspired by the football player Edgar Davis, and we saw around that time, uh, I think it was a, a couple of years ago, uh, he, he kind of... Um, he saw it and he was kind of like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. From what we understood was that he saw it, like his son showed it to him because he played the game. Yeah. And he thought, oh, that's pretty cool. But now what we understand was that he saw it and he went, that's my likeness, I'm suing you. Yeah. Uh, and he won the lawsuit. He sued. He, 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 he sued? He, is that how you say it? Sued? Yeah. Yeah, he sued Riot Games over the League of Legends skin Striker Lucian and he won the lawsuit. Um. He won it in his home country of the Netherlands, though, yeah. which is important because uh, the skin was sold all over the world. And in their settlement, they said he had to give them all the money they'd earned uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah. But the skin has been sold all over the world. And the Netherlands is a really small part of their market. Yeah. This is game is huge in China. It's huge in America. It's huge in the rest of Europe. Uh, so I think they made a lot more money than they had to give Edgar <laughs> Davis. I think it was worth it. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it seems a bit weird though. It's like he was. It seemed that he was okay with it, and then he wasn't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know what's going on there. I don't know if I would agree that it was too much like him. I don't think you should be able to sue someone for being looking like you. Personally. I wonder if they have a comparison image. No, because he owns the rights to his likeness. They don't have a comparison image on here. Yeah, but the picture. He does look. It's quite not. Similar. It's not. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't look just like him. Surely. Like it's it's designed to go on another character's skin, isn't but it's it? like his famous glasses and stuff like mm, that. I guess. Yeah, comparison image. If I can find where I was. I think you're further afoot than you think you are, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Get through this stuff. Oh, here we go. Right, because that's that's Edgar Davis, right? Yeah. The football player, and then the, here is the striker Lucian skin right here, right? This really still looks like Lucian though. <laughs> Yeah, that still looks like Lucian. Okay. I can give you a comparison shot of what Lucian the character looks like. Uh, because he does look... He still looks like Lucian. Here he is. Yeah, he, looks, he still looks like Lucian. This is Lucian. This is Edgar Davis. This I, is... I don't Lucian think skin. you should... I, especially cause, like, maybe it's inspired by him, but... I don't know. I think that's that. That's kind of pointless. Well, he won opinion. the lawsuit. Um, I'm not sure I agree with the lawsuit, but I don't know the in depth. Yeah, okay, it, here so. we go. Um, for you, so they, the right themselves said that the striker Lucian was inspired by the pro Edgar Davis. Yeah, I don't think it's fine. But then he decided that um, he owned the likeness to um, himself. It was based on his likeness that the skin sold. So he sued them in a Dutch court, and he won all the proceeds from the Netherlands, basically. Right. So I, you know, 
I'm I can, not sure I, can, I, I, can I can see both sides. Of yeah, this. I think it's definitely. I think inspired by his different. Like, I, I I think it's another thing to say that it only sold because it's similar to him. Though I think that's a bit unfair. I think Total Biscuit talked about this and he said he should definitely sue if he if it's like his likeness. He has a right to his likeness. I guess. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. Though I understand it's it's, it's lawfully okay. But I'm not sure if it should be a law. Is what I'm trying to say. Davis and Lucy now. Apparently, there's a 480 hertz gaming display supposedly coming out. Uh, I don't know if this click date. <laughs> uh, no one knows. It's just like a, a kind of a, a. There was a pro, there's a prototype version of it uh, that's in 480 hertz. Uh, do you have a 60 hertz monitor at home? You don't have 120 or 140? No, my, I think mine's just 60. I yeah. have 60 here as well. But I've heard such good things about 120 and 140. The thing is, though, I'm not a... Um, I'm actually okay with playing something... I, okay. I, I'm Obviously, I'm main PC. And I'm about to say something that will probably shoot myself in the foot. But I'm actually okay with 30 FPS. What the fuck but are you on about? I will say, if I give them a I choice... I am very not okay with No, no, but FPS. I'm okay with it. But if I was given a choice, I'd rather run at 60 FPS net looking good, though. I will say that. So I do agree with people when they say, oh, I should run at 60 and not look good. Like, yeah, that's that's true. But there's so many... But if I f- get to... If, if I if I found a game that's like, oh, it's only running at 30, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't really I definitely, care. I don't think you'd care about higher than 60 hertz because no. you really need to be able to see kind of the uh, the precise movements and see it clearer... This is definitely. It's not for the games is, I play. This is definitely for like professional cam strike yeah. players. Yeah, it's. I don't play FPSs, so I don't need this. Like if if I if I wanted to get like really good at Overwatch or CS:GO or something, yeah. I'd definitely get like a high hurt monitor. Because I I like management and like top down games, and it's like that is like the the thing that makes it I better. I think they use is... high hertz monitors as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I think what's more of a problem is like the information, like is the information getting to the player efficiently, and that they're able to remember like all the things or not. It's more to the actual players than the actual screen. It's just weird that you, you usually see like a CPU race, like the i nine and Risen. You see like a GPU race with um, the GTX ten eighty Ti and whatever the hell AMD. Yeah. Is. What is the newest AMD one? It's like what the a- a- Risen's the CPU. Oh, you're talking about the oh uh, the graphics card um, line. I forgot the name of that. Uh, is it like Radeon? This is. I thought it was like it's home above Radeon. I don't know. I'll, I'll be. I don't honest, know I'll AM- be honest right now. I, I don't. Know, I don't know AMD graphics. Cards yeah, I know AMD well. CPUs. I'm not very. I don't know much about AMD. They, yeah, they, they're doing like Radeon still. Okay. I think there's like a Radeon RX or something. Can you not just put like best AMD graphics card into Google? I think it's the uh, Radeon RX, but I'll look it up quickly. Uh, that's GTX Gigabyte Radeon. I guess it's Radeon, yeah, I guess. Mm. Anyways, it was what I was saying. It was a race for GPU, CPU. There was a race for 4K and yep. 60 FPS on consoles. Now there seems to be some sort of race for Hertz on your monitor. I don't know. Because so, some people are like, you can't see the difference between 60 and 144 hertz. But I think there's a Linus, no, there's like a Linus Tech Tech video. You think he, you can. He disproves this where he blind tests um, 60, 122, mm-hmm. and 144. And he can tell the difference between all of them every time. Yeah. I think you definitely can see it. It's just it's up to the individual whether they care about it or not. Mm. Anyway, we'll get to the hardware news quickly. Uh, apparently, graphics memory prices are going to have surged thirty percent in August, and this could affect graphic card prices. Okay. So um, this is going to affect smartphones, cryptocurrencies. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to affect them because there's a lot of like um, cryptocurrency is is going crazy right now. They just released Ethereum, like the competition to Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin's going is like crazy valuable as well. Um, and lots of people will farm Bitcoin with graphics cards because that's mm. how you mine the resources. So graphics uh, processors uh, are going to be um, really expensive yeah. uh, following stuff like this. Uh, and then Razer has launched the Aetherus wireless gaming grade mouse with 350 hours of battery life for $50. So that's Is just... that a main, a main? Yeah. 
I mean, I thought my mouse can last that long. Mine's battery powered. How, I've never used a wireless mouse. How much is a good amount of battery for a wireless mouse? Don't have to replace the batteries in like three months. Three months. That's that's my that's for my a... current that's my current gigabyte wireless mouse. Is it gaming grade? Yeah, it's five button mouse. It's meant to be for gaming. It's wider than like. It's like it's like wider than what you've got here, but only like a little bit. I can't see my mouse. No, no, but it's for you. Okay. You've got. I don't know what your mouse is. Like a it's Corsair, a Corsair uh, sniper button. Yeah, it's type of a that's, mouse. That's the sniper button. With, on the, I'll get a the, picture up. What are these buttons here? Uh, they changed the DPI. Okay, so you got the okay. Fair it's M six five. I it, think. It, I can't remember what my gigabyte mouse is called. Yeah, it I has. Have, it has, I have the M six. Has three. Only has three DPI settings. Um, like on its own thing, you can change it manually, obviously. Um, there's a five button mouse other than that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, I don't have to re, I don't have to replace that for a long because it has because it, it's that they're smart. So like when it's not moving, it just turns it goes to low power mode. Because this red button here is just, it's called the sniper button on my mouse, and if you hold it down, it lowers your DPI really low. Yeah, it's meant to be used for sniping. So you don't in games, but I don't think I've ever used it. You don't, you don't DPI play is a scam, by the way. Uh, having high DPI is a selling point of a lot of mouses, but if you're someone who doesn't know about mouses, DPI really doesn't matter. Like um, You can always increase the thing in Windows, can't you? To some extent. Yeah, but no one's going to use 7,000 DPI. Some mouses will come out, like, their advertising is, we have 7,000 DPI, right? Yeah. D- 7,000 DPI is going to be like this. Yeah. It's going to be crazy going all over your screen. You're not going to be able to control it. Like, to give you an example, like... Professional League of Legend player Bjergsen, I think he uses like one thousand two hundred DPI. Or something. That's still quite high. But isn't it? he uses it's it's maybe like a hundred DPI. Or something. He uses like a a really low DPI because he needs precise movements. You're mm. never going to use seven thousand DPI unless you're like a fucking. I, don't I know, think a pro OSU player a real, or something. A real selling point for like a mouse would be like more of like a dynamic DPI. Like selling slow, point, slow it down. Something you want to look for in your speed. mouse is. Uh, buttons. Yeah, uh, you're gonna want a, something that's comfortable to hold. So you want you want a five button mouse as a yeah. minimum, I, in my opinion, because then you have the back buttons. You can then middle. You can also middle click your. So you see these buttons scroll. here. These go backwards and forwards in like Google and stuff. They're just really in like File Explorer. They're really useful. Much, much like the back and forward buttons on the Steam controller. Yeah. If you have a Steam controller. <laughs> I really like. Um, speaking of, that, I really like this mouse. It's really. Unless, yeah, I can see. I can see why you like I it. Just don't, I, if they remove this, I'd be okay with that. Do you accidentally press it? Uh, I, no, I don't act because I hold it here. I hold it around here. Okay. With my thumb. I think I would do as well. I think they made it a new version of this mouse as well. But in in is in, that a wider one? Was it, it the same? They they wider? did it. They did it in Corsair f- um, fashion, where with the same thing with my oh, K ninety and the K nine five. Uh, they made a M65 Pro where they li- they literally just the the, the, the main difference beautiful. was they just added RGB lights to it. Yeah, look, look how beautiful it is. Um, look at it; it's, it's lovely. It's time to stop. No, with the RGB lights. As one a, a wise man once said, it's never time to stop. I don't know. Who said, I I said, said that. that. I said that. Okay. <laughs> Square Enix announced they're releasing Final Fantasy 15 on PC. Uh, they showed off a hardware demo with uh, NVIDIA, which showed off uh, the PC port for 2018. It's not coming out this year. Uh, we are getting towards the Flying end of 2017. Flying car that crashes all the time. Um, Sorry. But yeah, they, they're going to have NVIDIA graphics updates uh, when... up to 4K. Uh, and they're going to add a first-person mode to the PC version. And there was a bunch of like... Fake news saying it was going to be 170 gigabyte download when it was coming out on PC. But I think that was a mistake based on the based on the what the the kind of the tech specs and what the the 4K version of the game was going to be. Right. I think it's going to be a lot smaller than that, and there may be an additional graphics pack. I'm not sure though. Square Enix is normally good with these sort of things, so I think that's true that they will do it as in a graphics pack afterwards. Hmm. But we'll have to see, I guess. Well, like um, Skyrim style. Yeah. Skyrim has like a HD yeah, yeah, yeah. graphics pack. Although I don't use that, but yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, one big thing. It's 
apart from uh, versatile screenshots, is that oh. he's, he's getting workshop support. Which is really big. Oh, yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah about here's that, the first actually. person camera I was talking about. Is that so you don't get fucked up by the camera all the time? Mm hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think the gameplay would change a lot if you had a first person mode? Because you're no, going to get not, it to experience Not really. It. It, I just feel like it'd be good if you, if you could. Dynamic, you can change it any time. You can, you can, instead of having the annoying camera that you can't see. Speaking of first person first mode, person. I played through. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. Yeah. I. I specifically, because you can go first person mode on that to like throw your yeah pre precise stuff. throwing. Yeah. I played the entirety of Ratchet and Clank in first person, and I found that kind of an interesting, different experience. It's it's kind of like it's, a different game in first person. Isn't that more clunky technically though? Was it, it the platform's it so? a lot harder? Yeah, the gunplay is. And the gunplay's never been really clunky in Ratchet. It's always been no, good. No, it's always been like very good strafing. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you pointing to? This is the Final Fantasy mobile game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look how stupid it looks. <laughs> you got Ike that, Poseidon's Jewish nose there as that's well. Not, it's not news. Well, it is news, I guess. But it's and news Eric Andre really... as well. Okay. Anyway. You've been recommending this. Age of Empires 4 is a game that's coming out. Oh, I was just... Actually, yeah, this is just... It will run... It will run on older PCs. They are adding support for older systems. Yeah. And it will have workshop support. This is just the article that I was uh, referencing when I say, if you want to check that out, go mm -hmm. PC Gamer. Uh, Age of Empires 4 is coming out. Uh, Age of Empires 1, 2, and 3 are all getting definitive editions. And um, Warhammer 4000, Dawn of War, and the company I... Heroes of Studio... Uh, Relic Entertainment is on board for the long-awaited Age of Empires 4. Our, our good old friend Scorn so. Retort said he, just, he didn't know what they'd be doing for the fourth game of Age of Empires. Like, he didn't know if he'd be doing like more of a span in time, so like, you start off like, Do you really early so, to like, I don't late know, game. Like, when, whenever I talk to people, they know about this, but there was an advertisement for Age of Empires 4 in a uh, the back of like a PC Gamer magazine, and they showed Age of Empires 1, Age of Empires 2, Age of Empires 3... And then Age of Empires 4 was going to be like uh, World War 2. Right. And then Age of Empires 5 was originally going to be like futuristic. Yeah. I'll see if I can find a picture quickly because it's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, here's the picture, right? Okay. Because I remember reading this ages ago in my um, PC Gamer. Here it is, right? Because you see, one is like Spartans, two is like uh, medieval, three you had like the uh, revolution, uh, four was going to be like army soldiers, and then five was apparently going to be like futuristic, kind right. of like XCOM style stuff. Yeah. In Civ. It's interesting, I guess. Would you be stuck with them or would you start from the same time and get up to that technology level? No, I think you'd start that technology. Okay, that's really weird. That's what I understand about that. That seems but... far less interesting to me. Like that, 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 that vision of four and five are less interesting to me. Mm. I don't think I've ever had this many tabs open on Chrome before. You haven't. No, oh. I have so many tabs open right now. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Check that out. If when is when is it coming out? Let me have a look. Do they say at the end of the trailer? Know. It's Windows 10 exclusive, so I assume you're not playing it. Me? No. Because you hate Windows 10. Yeah. Free spare still be available. Oh, the Age of Empires Definitive Edition, like the remake of the first one, was so good when it just came out with the priest going, Wallololol. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good reveal, yeah. That's true. Uh, from what I see, they haven't got a release date yet, unfortunately. Well. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Defense Division for the first game is coming out in October, right? Ooh, Gwen um, is getting a full single-player campaign. It's going to be 15 hours long and features as much dialogue as the Heart of Stone, uh, Hearts of Stone expansion in um, The Witcher 3. Yeah. I thought it was quite a lot, I wanted to I look at the Reddit thread because there was such a funny comment where it said, the first Gwent game had this really cool mini game where in between matches you could roam across the <laughs> fantasy world and kill monsters and stuff and all of the characters you saw in the mini game were based off the main cards. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's called The Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, they sh it's called Gwent Thronebreaker and I'm really excited to see a single player expansion from CG Project Red 
who do fantastic narrative single player yeah. content in their fantastic uh, strategy based card game that is not RNG like fucking Hearthstone. No, it's not RNG from Hearthstone at all. It's actually just really good. Yeah. I'm really excited to try this out. I'm definitely going to play it um, as soon as it comes is this, out. Is the story campaign free though, or is it a, a bought thing? I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Because I don't know if the, it came. It, they announced this at around Gamescom, I think. Yeah. So I don't know if they uh, released any more information about it than just the trailer. But I'll check quickly for you. Um, Will we know? Coming this year, so it's coming 2017. I, 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 I don't, we don't know. I don't know. But they're adding... Um, they're adding new cards yeah. as well, which is really cool. I actually really want to play Gwent now, actually. Look there's, there's, that, that, that gif really makes me want to play Gwent, actually. They did a massive update as well uh, as releasing um, the uh, trailer for the new expansion. So definitely check out Gwent. I gave you a key to it. I know you did. And you still haven't played it. No. You've had access to it this whole time. Well, you son of a gun. I don't know where the, 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 your message you sent me went, so that's my excuse. Uh, big news. Um, Microsoft and Xbox confirmed they're in cross-play uh, talks with Sony, so they're definitely trying to start this cross-play between you know, PC, Xbox, uh, Switch, uh, PS4. So that's really interesting because they were notoriously like anti crossplay. Well, they were like, we're at the top of the game. No, we don't want, we don't need to like do that. Mm -hmm. Everyone's already bought our console. Right, but uh, you know. So, but yeah. The thing is, though, Xbox literally has nothing to lose because yep. they own Microsoft. So they're going to get people on Windows 10 anyway. Yeah. You might as well. And what if Nintendo's doing? Like, I'd, I'd expect this, this, like, Nintendo to be like, no, because we see their cross-platform play with Rocket League and Minecraft. Yeah. I expect Nintendo to be like, yeah, no, no, I won't cross-platform play, but Sony... But they're, on the but they're on the losing foot, So and Sony's not on the losing foot, so they immediately went, no, we don't need to do that. Hmm. We don't need to do stuff for our customers because everyone they've already paid for it. They're already making money from their customers. They don't, they don't need to be competitive in any way. Oh, Half-Life 3 confirmed. So, Mark <laughs> Laidlaw... Uh, he put out a blog post which basically he changed the names of some of the characters in Half-Life uh, 2. Uh, so he, he changed like um, Gertie Fermont, which is obviously Gordon Freeman. And he basically wrote down his what he would have as the ending of the Half-Life uh, 2 episode 3 okay. to end the trilogy. And they he said like it was built in a way where you could always have a... Um, a cliffhanger at the end to keep Gordon in stasis for the next episode. Yeah. But I think... I don't know what's gone on, whether he's released this kind of coded to get around NDAs and copyright and stuff and just be like, he's done this despite Valve for never, you know, fully releasing it. He's done this... He's told Valve about this and they've kind of given him the wink to just yeah. say it's Maybe. okay to do this or he just released I this I wonder because if this he was, wanted to get it out. I there. wonder if this was like an original idea and like he had NDA signed and they're like, we're not doing this anymore. You can you can like put it out there. Yeah. I don't know. I think this is definitely... I definitely don't think Valve will ever make an episode three, but I do think they may, not, they, not, not they may so. make... A Half Life Three with a different set of characters and stuff. Oh, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I don't think the Half Life series is dead, but I'm okay. You don't think they continue their episode because like, we were talking about Mass Effect, and I was saying I think there's enough Mass Effect games, and yeah, you know, they don't need to make another. They one. have three I huge think... ex games, and I, t I guess four as well. Now, you know, but... Valve's making money. They're making a fucking Dota card game. They really want to make expansions and stuff for games that aren't Half Life. Or Portal. Or Portal, the good ones. Yeah. The my favourite ones. Yeah, those are my favourite ones as well. Uh, not to say that the other games aren't fantastic. I do think Dota 2 is a very well-made MOBA, one of the best esports yeah. out there. I don't well really balanced. care about MOBAs, though. I think C CSGO is a good game. I don't care about FPSs. What else are they working on? 
tier. I like. Two. I love VR. So yeah, no VR. Seeing, I'm glad they're you know, working on VR. Um, at least a third of their company working on the Vive is really cool. Yeah, that's uh, really good. Speaking of virtual reality, it's the VR section. Um, uh, if you want to read it, there is a trans. Someone's made a version where they've replaced all the coded word like Gertie Fer- Fremont with Gordon Freeman instead, so it's a lot easier to read and understand. If you go to Valve News Network, Tyler McVicker on YouTube, he has a link to the um, yeah the uh, changed version so it's easy to read. And he, they've also put together a mod called Half-Life 2 Afterlife, which, which is a compilation of... We've also done a video on. Oh yeah, we've done a spotlight on that will be coming out in the next month or so. Yeah. Um, which... It's a compilation of all like the development maps for Half Life Three as well, ep- yeah. Episode Three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of VR, the Vive has taken a price cut in order to be more competitive with other headsets on the market. Um, starting today, they're reducing the price of the Vive by two hundred dollars for the foreseeable future, and it's now available for six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And they've also PlayStation VR is getting a price cut as well to four hundred dollars. It's to start selling at $400 for the core PS4, uh, PS uh, VR set. So it's actually really good time. And the Sony produced mini game called PlayStation World has been dropped. Uh, the bundle has been dropped to $450. Mm. Yeah, so I, I'm actually really excited for the Vive price. Cause that, that's like a far more easy to get into yeah, money so wise. PS VR is $400 and the Vive is now $600. But what's that in real money? No, no, no. <laughs> the 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 vibe is moving on to the next generation yes. of lighthouses, the next generation of SDKs that won't be compatible with the current ones. So they are they are kind of trying to cut the price now because they're definitely moving on with VR and trying to make it a lot better. Yeah, they're making. A, were they were they calling like Vive? 2? Oh yeah. So the most interesting thing for me personally was. KFC is making a VR game, and I thought it was very scary. It was because I was, <laughs> I was looking at this, and I was like, "Okay, KFC making a VR game, okay." And then you look at the trailer, and like this is really fucking weird. It's it like looks, a, it's like a KFC horror game. It looks like a parody of themselves that they're funding. Yeah, is that not weird? I don't know. This, this it makes it like KFC thing. is like this evil company yeah. that's gonna keep you trapped in a room making KFC recipes. <laughs> it's so weird. Apparently, it's meant to be like a escape room sort of thing. I just that picture is so scary, and that they it use it in scar- advertising. It as gets their scarier as well, though. I know. But apparently it's, it's trying to teach you how to make KFC. The only way you can escape this evil nightmare <laughs> is by putting together, is by learning delicious recipes with a unique blend of herbs and spices. With a special yeah. sauce. Because like, you see some parts and you're like, oh, this is kind of like, you know what game this reminds me of? Uh, it's like the VR, ge- the VR wizard game, what's it called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was right. talking about where it's like, it's really interesting. Um... Waltz of the Wizard, I think this is it. Yeah, 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 it's kind of like Waltz of the Wizard, where I was saying, oh, it's just really, you can do some really interesting magic shit, and then it's actually, it has some, like, really fucking scary parts in it. If this is anything like Waltz of the Wizard, I'm fucking in. I'm making KFC yeah. in VR. I want to make KFC. It looks really, I like creepy things. It looks really coolly creepy. I like the eyes behind so the weird mask that, at the end. That KFC is just like, we're making a VR game. Which basically says we're evil. About <laughs> cooking fried chicken to escape evil, you know, the colonel's house. Yeah. And making KFC. If you know what Walt the Wizard is, it's this, and it's fantastic. It's a free VR demo. Uh, we won the full game. Yeah. I, I'm still... They still haven't announced anything about budget Why cuts. Not? They said it was coming in 2017, and we still haven't found anything. It's been a year since like, a lot of these I, VR assu- games. And I'm like, assuming we won't see anything from budget cuts until at least 2018 at this point. We but do, we do know really budget, budget cuts, cuts is being funded partly by Valve, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that much. Uh, Gabe Neal confirmed that Artifact isn't one of the three virtual reality projects that Valve is working on. Uh, we now know that um, Artifact isn't one of the three VR projects. So there's still hope for Half-Life VR. Uh, maybe. Hopefully. Uh, Player Unknown. We'll talk quickly about Player Unknown Battleground because I just want to get through all the news about it uh, because me and Tony aren't big pub gu- uh, PUBG guys, but we want to keep you informed. PUBG sounds like um, like a rap artist. So uh, 
PUBG is now the uh, most popular game on Steam, and I think it might be the most popular game in the world right now. Uh, it's overtook Dota 2 as the most played game on Steam. Um, they've changed the way patches work. So they used to do weekly patches, uh, but they said it was taking longer to, uh, than they wanted to, and they they've if they wanted to get weekly patches out... They had to rush them, and it wasn't yeah. very good. They said, then they said that they had to like, te- like more time was going into testing it to no yeah. bugs than it was to actually develop anything. Well, the basically they said they want uh, more time to test everything to make sure it's working. Yeah, because they um, they have a shorter like Q and A test time. So now they've made it so they're not doing weekly patches anymore. So is it um, monthly now, or is it? I think it's just whatever. Uh, when whenever it's been thoroughly tested, okay, then, then they will release it. Yeah, that's good. I, I, think, I think that's a good way of doing things. Mm. Uh, they're making first person only servers. I think they may have released this, but I'm not sure because uh, I don't own the game. That's, yeah, so it's now live, right? So this is what's in it. Yeah, so they've now made first person only servers with leader, um, and they said leaderboards are coming as well. I find it weird that they haven't put leaderboards in yet, though. They might have done in that patch, I'm not sure. No, but if I'm with it, it's, it's a patch for leaderboard. For me, I feel like would that be like really popular like day one almost. So Blue Hole Inc., the people who make uh, PUBG, have announced an expanded partnership with Microsoft. So it sounds like uh, they announced PUBG is coming to console as well. It may be they may have a console exclusive with Microsoft to have it exclusively on the Xbox. Mm. But we'll see how that goes out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, or however long it takes. Uh, there's a new map on PUBG. They've released a desert map. There's definitely a lot of development that's going into this game. It's nice to see, you know, the most popular game uh, is getting a lot of work added to it. Uh, I will say, though, it's still very fucking buggy. And saying that they keep saying this game is eSports ready, and there's consistently a bug where people can see through walls and yeah. shoot people through walls and shit. This game is not eSports ready. Please stop saying it's eSports well, it's ready. In early access. It's in early access. It can't be. It's in early access, but they keep saying it's yeah. eSports ready. It's going to be a massive I think eSports. Please stop saying you can that. Have, you could have like demonstrations in like some sort of league, but it won't be like a competitive league. It'd be just uh-huh. like a fun league. So there's now loot boxes in PUBG, and this caused some kind of controversy. I think they said a bad version of loot boxes. So they said they were never going to add loot boxes in an article. Yeah. Um, and they said that they didn't uh, want to do this sort of thing. And it's also in early access as well. Yeah. So there's loot boxes in this well, game in early there's, access. It's, there's more problems as well. They yeah. split up all the stuff into like four sections, so you have to like open loads of loot boxes to get the correct four. You can then merge together into an actual item. So like, well, that's first of all really stupid, and second of all, aren't they planning to make it so when it comes out of early access, you can't unlock like the in-game items in-game? Mm. They'll all be through loot boxes. Yeah, like, they, that's they want really to do it all through loot boxes. Imagine Overwatch, where everything customizable was you could only get it through loot boxes or only get it through paid loot boxes. Mm. Yeah, you have to pay for the You need the boxes. keys. You need the keys to open There it. is no way to earn the contents of the loot box without putting no. money, more money into the game through microtransactions. So that's a really bad way of doing it, in my opinion. And they also have a Steam Marketplace. So these things are going for like $300, $400 specifically for certain cosmetics. And they now have a huge problem with AFK farming mm. uh, just to get stuff. And they, they've said recently... AFK farming is something they're going to look into and try and discourage and stop. Yeah. Uh, and they could just not have a stupid loot box system. That would encourage it and not make yeah. it stop. How but, are we doing I mean, for time? Um, we have like 12 minutes remaining. Okay, well, I'll take. I'll, I'll talk a lot about loot boxes next week because I think I want to go really in-depth. Yeah, we, 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 that's kind of, like, next week's kind of be like the, we're going to detail of a couple of things this week and something we've we've left back from what happened this week as well. So I think we're running out of time. Uh, GTA Online did an update and they added a PUBG style mode. It apparently isn't as good as PUBG, but it exists. Well, it wouldn't be, but I feel like a lot of people would still play it. Yeah, GTA Online is still pretty popular. I think people are still playing it, so it's kind of it's a it's a free update yeah. added. Uh, it's just a real shame that they mode. don't produce single player expansions for GTA Five just because yeah. the online is they've ruined it. Well, you know this is going to happen with yeah. Red Dead Redemption as well when that comes mm-hmm. out. Anyway, I think that's the end of the podcast. So you can catch us, speaking of the new Spotlight Rock of Ages, check that out. It's not, uh, a, it's not a Fidme exclusive. 
You can check us out <laughs> vid.me slash in between podcast and smash that follow button. You know, lick that bell. I'm sorry? Uh, <laughs> notification bell. Okay. Uh, and um, I don't know, wallop that subscribe button. I don't know. What, what, what do the YouTube kids say? Speaking of YouTube, in between podcast, type at, and everything in between podcast in or type in Pete Mar new podcast. You'll probably find us. We'll talk about Ed Sheeran every week as well. Uh, yeah, check us out I on YouTube. Like... Check me out on Twitter. Aren't we missing uh, a video on our YouTube there? <laughs> are we? <laughs> what are we missing? Oh. <laughs> okay. The spotlight is a video exclusive this week. Right? So, in order to. So, I have the spotlight set up to auto update yeah. uh, onto Vidme. So they, I released them like a couple of weeks earlier, and then they automatically publish the day um, they're supposed to come out, yeah. which is in between the podcast. But you can't do that on YouTube. You can't schedule videos on YouTube unless you're a YouTube partner and you've applied for monetization, which we don't want to do because we want to keep the podcast ad-free yeah. and make it supported by you guys who watch it. We, we, we know a lot of people use Adblock, and we ourselves don't like ads. So we'd rather keep the podcast well, we free of ads. We, we, we don't want to get like, if we ever get big, we don't want to get fucked over by YouTube going, oh, well, well, those advertisers have pulled out and we're going to get fucked by it. We'd rather it be supported by people who actually want to watch it, like a normal business mm. model of like, you pay, you get. Anyway, if you want to, fo- I always post about the podcast on Twitter. So if you want to read that and read about me shit posting <laughs> about Eddie Murphy on the new lull on Twitch. Um, which I'll probably talk about next week calling people or saying to people it's a meme you did yeah anime was a mistake yeah Um, check me out on twitter and then facebook uh, at scorn2000 that is the end of the podcast and uh, goodbye bye